everybody. Welcome to the August 28th, 2018 regular meeting and work session of the Town Board of the Town of Ossining. Please rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. And please remain standing following me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, for God, visible, justice for and I ask that you uh, join me in observing a moment of silence in memory of Senator John McCain, a true statesman who put the country above himself all of his service and who really did model the attitude and type of behavior we respect in government and aspire to. He has certainly set a high bar, but an important one, especially at this time in our country. Our hearts go out to his family and the nation at this difficult time. Councilmember DeTori. Present. Councilmember Shaw. Present. Councilmember Feldman. Present. Councilmember Wilshire. Present. Supervisor Levenberg. Present. We, we will begin t this evening with the first public hearing, local law number four, regulating use of leaf blowers. We are allowing um, one three minute opportunity to speak. Okay. And I just want to uh, make a couple of statements before we launch into our public comments. Yes. Okay. Uh, so we are one of a handful of municipalities left in Westchester that has not adopted a law regulating the use of leaf blowers. The one we are proposing would go into effect uh, at the end of May 2019 and would basically limit the use during the summer months of um, gas powered leaf blowers with some restrictions on the loudness of the blower during the leaf season. We have received comments to ask us to make it more restrictive as well as those asking us to make it less so. Our counsel to the town, Christy Tomadonna, has taken the comments from a recent work session and incorporated them into a revised version of this proposed law uh, and simplified it. And that was posted, I believe, yesterday. Uh, Ms. Adana, would you like to highlight some of the changes? And then we will open up for public comment. Well, I mean, the, the big comment from the board was to try to simplify it and um, I think the discussion was to limit it to gas at this time uh, gas leaf floors however you know this is just a, my incorporation of the comments I heard from the board nothing set in stone and you know I wel we welcome your continuing comment and feedback and I'm sure we'll have another work session about this after the public's comments tonight but so with that in mind um, there's a red line that limits it to gas leaf blowers, and there is a global prohibition between May 31st and September 30th of every year, beginning in 2019, with some exceptions um, to certain types of properties and uses, including municipal and schools and driveway, road paving, and ceiling activities, and properties exceeding a certain size. Um, one, two things that the board had discussed at the work session last week was having an exception in cases of major storms or other emergencies where the town supervisor could declare an exemption for a period of statutorily stated to be seven days, but also with the discretion of the supervisor to extend it when necessary, by, when deemed necessary by her. Um, also giving the supervisor the authority to grant permits for special circumstances during the um, prohibited period of May 31st to September 30th when deemed appropriate for a fee. Um, there was brief discussion about those uh, those rights and powers being delegated to the town supervisor, but and that's how it is in some other codes. In other but in some codes it does go to the um, the superintendent of highways or the uh, the DPW superintendent, the village the su in some municipalities where it's a village, the village engineer, the town engineer. So that's something we could talk about further too, but just as a starting off point, it is with the town supervisor's office. Um, and then as the supervisor mentioned, there are certain additional regulations that regulate um, the use of gas leaf blowers when, it, when they are permitted. And those are times of day and days of week, and as well as certain noise and environmental requirements that the leaf blower being used would have to satisfy. So I guess okay. that's where we're starting from. Fantastic. 
Dana, uh, we do have up-to-date uh, up local law here if anybody would like to look at a copy. Is there anybody who Is has come to address the board on the leaf blower legislation? The first one, the the first person I have is Judy um, Carton. I'm here uh, from Hudson Watch townhomes, which we're all familiar with, I assume. Some of my neighbors are here with me, about eight of us. We also have a petition that has been signed by 83 uh, residents of Hudson Watch. And the changes you made eliminate a lot of questions we have, but we have a major question, and which is what we had last week, and the addition of the individual lot exceeding one acre in size. We at Hudson Watch are 16 clustered buildings, 79 homes on 15 acres. So we would like to know, and I know we have just three minutes, so I'll make this short, where does Hudson Watch fit in? Do we fit in to the individual lot exceeding one acre? We're single family homes on 15 acres, clustered build, okay. 16 clustered buildings. We're a large parcel. We um, would like to know that. I'm gonna just ask council if you think that it fits in and if it would fit in under individual or if it would fit in under the I mean, honestly, there were, the, the way I derived that, um, it, again, just a starting off point, but in the original version, there were a lot of properties that were exempt um, that seemed to be larger types of properties, golf courses, hospitals, retirement communities, park cemeteries. Um, and so I was trying to condense all of those types of uses into the types of lots that they would probably be found on, which generally I thought would exceed one acre in size. Um, you know, and this is something that has come up and we've discussed this at work sessions where, you know, you're, we're trying to go through this and come up with situations um, and come up with language and then you kind of come up with different situations and say, oh, well, what about this and what about that? And inevitably that's probably going to come up. So, you know, maybe we do have to think about properties like that and where they would fit in, but just, it was supposed to just be a, pretty broad one acre limitation. Um, so I, I think maybe that's something that the board would have you to consider. Have, if I could just interject, you have in Austin, the town and maybe it's part of the village, but you've got a lot of us. I mean, I'm only here, we're only here speaking for us at lunch, but we can sweep to clear leaves and everything. This is a major piece of property. We have um, beautiful property. Fortunately, the developer did not take up every square inch we we have a lot of land we have a lot of beautiful trees requires a lot of maintenance and um based on the fact that we are designated single family we pay single family taxes uh because we are a pud pud we're not a condo we don't get that tax uh break that that other large properties get and so it's uh it seems oh can you move uh, that microphone back again <laughs> oh, thank <sorry>. you <laughs> <laughs> It's like, it looks like it's going to eat me. Um, um, so we would like very much if um, this is not the forum to um, ask for a provision that uh, puts a Hudson Watch in with the um, municipal and school properties where you have large entities all over the place, some of which probably require less than an acre, but we are a major factor in the town paying major taxes, we might add, and um, it would be a real big hardship. So if this is not the forum for us to um, have you folks address this, tell us where to go. And so we'll usually with the public hearings, we don't do back and forth, but we okay. accept comments, and then we would, will reconsider them again in work session at, at some time. The only thing I would, I would ask is, obviously this is, the point of this is, this isn't leaf season when this prohibition is in effect, right? So leaf season is done. You've finished your, your spring cleanup. It's the end of May. The leaves are supposed to be gone by now. Um, so what is it exactly that you're using the leaf blowers for at Hudson Watch from during the summer? During the summer? Leaves. We have a lot of trees. Um, leaf season, the trees don't know that on May 31st, they're not supposed to drop leaves. They also... We also use it, we have a lot of 15 acres, a lot of it is, is, is lawns. And so there's mowing that's done and they also blow to clean, clean the, the uh, clippings from the, from the grass. Um, 
We have a company that is there. The whole property takes one day, sometimes two days, depending upon the, the weather. Um, they're very efficient. Um, and the property is beautiful, partly because we take such good care of it. But it's not just leaves. I mean, it goes way beyond, you know, it doesn't end May 31st and it doesn't end October, whatever. We're cleaning leaves all year long. And during the, the season, the grass season, it's, it's leaf clippings. And then they do, and during the snowy season, um, because we're on, we're on a hill, um, there are times when the, there's a minor snow, but we need to get, keep the roads clear. And then the easiest way to do, especially since we just repaved our driveways and roads and everything went on with them, is to do it with a blower. Right, so that, but this isn't away. in effect during the winter months. So. Okay, just let you know the, the uses the, the of prohibition it. to not have leaf blowers. I mean, the only other thing I, I would just say is that there are a lot of other techniques right now that are that have been employed. Such as? Um, such as um, mulching in place, for example. So you don't actually, you actually chop, they have mowers now that chop the leaves and leave them in place, and it's much better for your lawns yeah, and well, you, uh, yeah. and th and that's something that we've actually undertaken also in our town parks and we've been advocating for and there are landscapers many of the landscapers now because again this prohibition is not austin specific it's a lot of municipalities have taken this up and you know some exempt larger properties but not all of them do so there again there are other alternatives. I I, I don't want to again get into the back and forth since the public is hearing. It, I just want to let noise, you know that there is are it some a other noise factor? It's, it's a combination. It's, it's two. It's kind of twofold. So it's a noise factor, number one, and number two is an environmental um, issue as well. So in the next go around to this, are you folks going to hand out something that lists out the alternative methods so that we can investigate what that's going to cost sure. in terms of our landscaping bill? Absolutely, ahead, we can share. Too. We can share that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank That's you. That's the alternatives. Well. Okay. I'm sure you're going to hear from some other people about that as well from the from the in the public hearing portion of this. I'm guessing, but I, I could be wrong. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. You already covered it. Okay. Donna Sharrett. Donna Sharrett, 84 Morningside Drive. Um, so I would like to thank the board and um, all the um, consultants and lawyers for doing Can all you just the, move the microphone hard up a work bit. on yes. this. I mean, you really put a lot of effort into it, so I would like to thank you all for that. Um, it's greatly appreciated. Um, I think a lot of these changes are really great. I would like to emphasize that uh, mulch mowing, if, if we could focus on that, um, that would be a solution. I actually do garden for people, and I garden for a condo garden. And I, when the guys come through the leaf blowers, they have actually destroyed plants that I have planted because those things are so forceful. Um, it's bad for the soil. It's really bad for the workers breathing all that stuff. So um, the mulch mowing is um, a better solution. I agree that a good compromise would be um, allowing the electric leaf blowers and um, any of the grass clippings that were coming on the walkways could definitely be blown off with those. Um, so that would solve the problems um, for um, a lot of people, particularly the condos, but also people with large driveways would still have some access. I would prefer there being no leaf blowers, but I think that it's a good compromise. Um, so I, I think that's, um, that's great. And um, the other thing I would say is with the municipality and the school properties, I think that we should definitely, if you would leave it like that, that's that's your uh, um, option. But I think we should try to educate um, the schools, and because if any place would be a good place to do it, would be around kids, and it's much better for the soil. It's um, and it's much better for people breathing, not having those things. So um, if there could be some education component for those entities, um, so that they could eventually. Um, get mulch mowers and get away from the leaf blowers sometime. Really good. Thank you. Is there anyone else here to address the board? Is there anyone else here to address the board on the leaf blower? Come on up, Mr. Gallery. Just please introduce yourself. Amen. Uh, Scott Gallery, live at 47 Revolutionary Road, and I own a landscaping company. 
Uh, I'm not going to get into a lot tonight, but the question I do have, if this is all for an environment issue and noise, then why are we doing it in the parks? Why are we doing a municipality? What's the difference? Kids hang out in the park, and they're doing it, so why can't we do it? That's all I have to say. Anyone else? Just need your name and address. Aaron 60 Maria Lane, Austin, New York. I just uh, I was hoping the police chief or someone to be here. I I, I got to be honest that I'm going to break this law. Um, this law will be broken between 20 and 50 times a day. My question is to completely enforce this law. How many more officers will you need and at what cost? Okay. Um, I won't be paying for the summons that I get. I'm going to put in my contracts to the homeowners that if I get a summons, they have to pay for it or just increase the price of the job till, till I won't have to pay for it. I'm not going to go out of business paying for summons for a dumb law. The DEC requires us to blow off all hardscapes after an application. It's against state law not to. Whose law should I break, yours or the state's? Thank you. Sorry, could you just clarify after an application? What does that mean? Pesticides, fertilizer. I'm just clarifying for the camera. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Leaf blowers? Going once, going twice. Okay, so we are going to uh, keep this public hearing open um, to the next, which is September, Wednesday, September 12th, will be our next uh, opportunity to address the board. And we will be scheduling a work session to continue our discussion. And thank you for your comments tonight. We appreciate them. Just do that by motion. Oh, can, I'm sorry, can I have a motion <laughs> to uh, extend the public hearing to September 12th? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the next public hearing is local law number five, accessory apartments. Um, I don't have anybody on our list, but if there's anyone here to okay, and I'm, Again, I'm just gonna um, do a brief introduction to the accessory apartment local law. Um, in response to a request from our building inspector, we decided to address accessory apartments again. We know it had been brought up a few years ago, uh, but we think there is still a need for this local law to be expanded. The town already allows very limited sized apartments in primary structures. This new law would allow someone to add to an accessory structure, such as a garage, also in a rather limited fashion, only 800 square feet or 33% of the total square feet of the living space, whichever is less. The zoning board would also still have the ability to say no if they believe there are too many of these in a particular area. David Stolman, our planner is here as well. Uh, David, is there anything you wanna highlight or clarify which might have been raised in written correspondence in advance of the public comments? Uh, yes, there are a few things. Okay. Is this on? Okay, thanks, thanks. Um, first of all, uh, a dwelling with an accessory apartment is not a two-family home, uh, mainly for the reasons you mentioned, uh, the, Dana. The, um, the accessory apartment has to be literally subordinate to the principal home um, in terms of size. It's also, I think, important to point out that you cannot build an addition and put an accessory apartment in it that addition would have to be on the uh, the building for at least two years, have a CEO for at least two years. In terms of architectural treatment, the um, home with the accessory apartment needs to still maintain the character of a single family lot. There can only be one entrance on the front or side of the principal building. I'm sorry, on the front side of the principal building, all other entrances shall be at the side or in the rear of the buildings. You talked about the size of the accessory apartment, and it can only be a maximum of two bedrooms. Either the accessory apartment or the main principal residence has to be owner-occupied. 
Uh, there would be renewal and reinspection provisions, which exist already. Annual. Annually. And um, there are circumstances whereby the Zoning Board of Appeals can clearly deny an a special permit for an accessory apartment. Um, the Zoning Board of Appeals shall deny an, a special permit for an accessory apartment should it find that the number of accessory apartments in a neighborhood, including the one proposed, will adversely affect the character of a single family zone neighborhood. This criteria for denial shall include, but not be limited to, the circumstance where three other such permits or approvals for accessory apartments have been issued within a radius of 500 feet of the property lines of the lot being proposed for an accessory apartment. So okay. uh, neighborhoods will not be overwhelmed with accessory apartments. That's pretty much all I wanted to say. Fantastic. So it's first come, first serve? Yes. Right, and you have to have, the structure has to be there for two years. It's can't You can't just put a structure up and then throw in an accessory apartment. No, I get that. Yeah, okay, just to, just to make it clear. Uh, is there anybody here uh, to talk to the board on local law number five accessory apartments? If so, if you haven't already, has anybody signed in? No. If, if you'd like to come to the, um, the microphone and introduce yourself. Hearing none, I think we're gonna ask council. Well, it's up to the board. I mean, this there weren't a lot of comments at the last public hearing. I think Mr. Stillman kind of recapped those issues in his overview. So we could close if, the, if the board's comfortable. You... No. There, there have been comments, and we're going to do another version. Okay. To incorporate oh, you are. John, yeah, I've been getting John feedback from the public. Okay. Also. Donna Sherrick, for example, made some good comments. So we are going to do another version of this. Okay, okay. then we should close the public. Okay, okay. so we are going, I will take a motion to extend, keep open this public hearing until September 12th. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. The next public hearing is local law number six, solar energy. And um, again, we are somewhat behind the ball on this one. Many municipalities in the county have adopted the state's recommended uniform solar code to make it easier for people and businesses to make the choice to go solar. There are three levels of solar we are trying to work into the code, roof mounted, ground mounted, and solar farms. Each of them has restrictions specific to the benefits and potential detriments that could occur with their installation. As it happens, there are a few companies that are interested in some parcels of land in the town that are zoned residential for possible development as a solar farm. I have heard comments the town is advocating clear cutting wooded parcels so we can have solar farms. I think that's a misrepresentation. We are certainly in the process of considering what, if anything, could work on parcels that are zoned residential. I'm hoping the same people who are advocating for us to be considerate of the overcrowding in our schools will also consider the options a developer might have to build more homes, which would of course require quite a lot of trees to be cut versus building a solar farm with minimal impact on roads, infrastructure, or schools, and of course, having the other benefit of providing sustainable energy. We understand trees would be coming down with any sort of currently zoned development, so this is another option we believe we should consider. Uh, Mr. Stallman, would you please discuss some of the key components of the proposed code? Sure, sure. Especially in, as it relates to the neighborhoods that it might be in. Okay. Thank you. Um, sure. So. To um, expand upon what you, you just said uh, regarding the three types of solar energy systems, the tier one solar energy systems are roof mounted solar energy systems and building integrated solar energy systems. The tier two category would be relatively small ground mounted solar energy systems and they would be subject to site plan approval from the planning board. The third category or tier three solar energy systems are the larger solar energy ground mounted systems such as a solar farm. They would need a conditional use permit from the planning board as well as site plan approval. Um, there are uh, abundant uh, provisions regarding the uh, various kinds of solar energy systems, including uh, especially large buffers for uh, solar farms. So as to uh, protect the environment, the visual environment, and and maintain as many trees as possible. The um, 
the tier one, uh, uh, I'm sorry, yes, the tier one solar energy systems would be allowed in all of the various zoning districts and there would be no minimum lot size. The tier two or the smaller ground mounted systems would be allowed in all of the zoning districts and the lot would have to be at least the minimum lot size for the zoning district in which the solar and energy system would be located. And right now, the way this is structured, solar farms would be allowed in the one family residence districts on at least two acres uh, and not permitted in the multifamily, multifamily in neighborhood commercial GB or GB1 districts because those properties are fairly small generally. And the solar farms would be permitted in the office research business and our office research education and BE zoning districts on a minimum lot size of at least two acres. Um, the tier two, the smaller ground mounted solar energy systems in the various zoning districts that they are permitted, which are all the zoning districts, would require twice the minimum standard setbacks for those uh, systems. In the, the tier three, the solar energy farms would in the uh, single family zoning districts require a setback of at least 100 feet and that would be maintained as a buffer and uh, actually 100 feet in the single family residence districts the ORB office research business and office research education and business education districts would all really need a setback of 100 feet and then there are other standards regarding height, height as well and there are as I said there are many, many standards which would be used and are designed to protect the environment. Okay. With that, we do have one, uh, three people. Wendy Masserman is first on our list. Wendy Masserman, <clears throat> 10 Morningside Court Ossining. First, let me say how very much in favor I am of solar energy. For Kids Only, our daycare center on North State Road has had solar energy since 2011. I do have some concerns about some of the things that I saw on the town video from August 7th. The solar company um, that spoke would like to put a solar farm at 90 Summers Town Road. After, he, after the, the, they spoke, there was another speaker, and I, I'm sorry I don't have her name. She, um, mentioned relaxing the tree code to allow the farm at 90 Summers Town Road. Although I know we're not speaking about a proposal right now, this was brought up at last meeting. I'm asking the town to stand firm on the tree code and in addition, the steep slope code that currently exists. This particular property is filled with both. There could also be issues with wetlands, as there are many properties in that area that have spring-fed ponds. I think, forget the pun, it's a slippery slope. When you make exceptions for one proposal, others will follow. We saw disastrous results when the town allowed townhouses to be built on North State Road or on less than an acre, relaxing the code. The builder immediately took down every tree and swamped the two houses below. I'm asking the town to put the brakes on and make sure that the codes that we pass are made to protect the residents. Donna Sharrett. Donna Sharrett, 84 Morningside Drive. Um, again, this is great that we're um, going to be thinking about solar, and um, but I am concerned that um, I, I at the last I watched last meeting and there were several asks from the company, um, and I <laughs> that's what I'm concerned about. I'm not concerned about getting solar. I'm just concerned about changing the laws um, and relaxing, as Wendy said, relaxing the laws. Um, can you just talk into the microphone a little I'm bit more, Don? I'm sorry. Um, so we worked really, really hard on the tree protection code and um, developed this 50% um, replacement of the based on the DBH. Um, I think that should stay. Um, we have people are, are allowed to contribute to a tree bank or um, 
or trees. I think that the tree bank is an, uh, something maybe that could be discussed um, uh, on these. If there's a lot of trees removed, monies could go into a tree bank that could go also instead of just buying trees, but also maintaining trees. Um, and like in Ryder Park, a lot of that area, wooded area needs a lot of work. It's got vines and um, invasive things, and all those things are really expensive. So if we had a tree bank, maybe we could actually um, build up the tree existing trees that we already have and protect those. Um, so I think that there's, you shouldn't relax the code. Um, if, they're, if people are going to build, there's plenty of opportunity to, to put to this fund. Um, of course, I was really upset when, um, and people, I've heard this a lot, that the solar is so much better than trees. I'm paraphrasing. That is really not true. Um, that's taking out a lot of considerations. That's looking at trees in a one-dimensional, and um, it's it's really like a selling point, and it's, and it's offensive. Um, I don't think that that should be used. Um, substituting Shrubs, it was asked if they could substitute tr shrubs for trees. Um, that would be something. Shrubs are really important. We never talk about shrubs. You need them for the wildlife. But um, if you're going to substitute shrubs for trees, there's going to be a lot of sh shrubs for every tree that's removed. So it's something that could be considered, but you have to, it can't be a one to one. It, um, some thought needs to go into that. Um, the comparison of wildfire planting to, to absorb rainwater, um, and then it was stated that it does that except in, in um, heavy rain events. Well, the climate, all the climate change models say that the rain is going to get heavier and more frequent. So um, we should just expect that we're going to get heavy rain a lot. And um, wildflower planting is fantastic, and I've asked for that, and that's really great to do. But again, it's not going to be the same as having trees. So there has to be considerations for that. Um, and I think that would be all that I would um, like to comment on that. So thank you very much. Can you <coughs> stand by? Good evening, everyone. Quan Stamba, Two Barns Road. I uh, just want to thank the board for uh, allowing us to have this time to share our feelings and questions. And I realize that there are many interests here that uh, we're considering. Um, I'm kind of new to the game, and there's some homework that I have to do to learn a little bit more about the proposed codes. Uh, and as you said earlier, maybe Austin is a step or two behind other municipalities. And I think there's an opportunity to look at best practice, if you ever have it, of like towns, like municipalities, talk to them, ask questions about the codes that they have in terms of sustainability. I think with this project, my largest concern is that the tier three piece. Um, Ossining's a growing community. There's limited supplies of land and green space and trees. Um, Wendy and our other counterpart here, uh, they, they've done their homework and there's some good data there. Um, and I just want the board to be mindful um, of the balance and the importance of balance. And I think with this tier three proposal for a potential solar farm, I think they would be very likely to, to respect that idea of sustainability uh, and to pay attention to the codes. We have codes for a reason. Uh, I hope you enforce them. Uh, thank you very much. Is there anyone else who wishes to address the board? Solar energy? OK. Yeah. OK. Um, I'm not really sure where. People are getting the idea that we're looking at changing the tree codes. We just spent a really lot of time on strengthening our tree codes, and, and we had a lot of discussions and a lot of uh, great input from the community. And I mean, I know I, for one, I'm not interested in, in changing our tree codes at all. So I don't know where it was asked for. By so there's, I, I do not. We we just did those. So <laughs> that's my. I mean, I so I don't. I don't want people to go around scaring people saying that, at least from my point of view. Um, and, you know, that's what this is about, is we're trying to get your feedback on what's best for Ossining, and we want everybody's feedback from all different perspectives. So thank you for your comments. Uh, and I appreciate the comments, too. And I just, again, I, I know a lot of people are very interested in maintaining our green space, but I want to remind people that many of these are private parcels. and. We have people who are looking to, to sell their private parcel to a developer. So it doesn't mean that it's going to be, unless 
we, the town, were to consider acquiring um, those parcels, and I'm not saying that we couldn't, but there's a big offset, which is if we were to look into acquiring those parcels, then an incorporated town would have to come up with the money to purchase the parcels, and there would be we would not be able to collect ta taxes on those parcels. So there is, you know, a financial, a significant financial offset to doing something like that. Is it impossible? No, but is is it difficult? Um, it is. So um, you know, there's again, there there there's a balance to be weighed. As much as we love the trees that are that are there right now, and we love to have this forested area, it's not necessarily going to maintain be that way forever. If we have somebody who's looking to sell their property, so I just want to make that statement. Um, that doesn't have anything to do with us not wanting to maintain a good balance between trees. And I and I appreciate all the the suggestions um, that were made of of ways that we can do that and and maintain our environment and, and maintain the benefit that trees do offer. Um, uh, I'm sorry, did you want to say something, Councilwoman Vittori, yes or no? Did, you I, I just a, had a thought, so I'm just putting this out there, there as sort of food for thought because, you know, this we're, we're talking about changing technologies and things that really didn't exist when some of these uh, zoning codes were, were made and, you know, we have all these things that we need to do and balance the need for um, how we're going to address our energy needs, but maintain the environment. So, you know, we just, and I, I'm not, you know, I'm not making this as a recommendation per se, but it's just an idea. Um, you know, we, we just um, had a group present that had a tremendous amount of property. Um, I'm not, I'm not offering their property up, but <laughs> there could be, you know, you know, for, for a condo complex that has a tremendous amount of property that maybe is not being utilized anything more than decorative um, or, or, you know, landscape that if, a, you know, if they had the option of negotiating with a solar company to put in a farm, that's a way to offset costs for them. So it can reduce the burden of costs for them. It's land that's already there and it's already clear cut. Um, and it would be sort of an innovative way to use space that's maybe more readily available than, than other space. Keep it in mind that any space that's currently zoned um, you know, could be, you know, the trees could be clear cut for, for any kind of development, you know, housing development, whatever it's zoned for. But we haven't even thought to look at existing parcels of lands where there could be a real cost benefit and energy benefit to the owners of that property and solar farm people. So it's just a thought. I, I, I just want to say, I don't know, we haven't thought about it. I know that there have certainly been discussions um, with some um, solar developments developers for example in Marino. Yeah, that's, um, that's so true. I don't that's think true. that I don't I, just because we haven't necessarily heard of them all doesn't mean that they haven't happened um, and there are um, definitely some potential spaces that are have already uh, been cleared that would be um, put, you know a, a, a space for com for community solar or some kind of a solar development and I do know that you know other parcels have had discussions. So I think that, again, I think what you know, we're hoping is to find a good balance that um, looks at all of the needs of the town and um, all of the possibilities and figures out a way to um, maintain our responsibility, um, our fiduciary responsibility to our taxpayers as well as our um, responsibility to our environment and to you know, to what we can continue to do. So we'll take everybody's comments um, under advisement and we'll continue to discuss this and um, hopefully, and we'll, I guess, keep this public hearing open and um, potentially incorporate some of the comments that we've already received into um, a revised uh, proposed local law. And Dan, I'd also like to take into account the aesthetics of the neighbors and the neighborhoods and what it looks like as we're driving around. Which I think we have done already, as as Mr. Stallman mentioned, because of the the setbacks and the requirements for buffers and um, uh, right. and screening. It's just an assessment of visual impact. Right. Yeah, that that's actually already in there. That's really in already in there. So. Requirements. Right. Um, okay. So, is there anybody else here who would like to uh, address us on solar uh, for, as part of this public hearing? Otherwise, we're going to adjourn it, keep it open until. Uh, September 12th with a motion from one of my colleagues. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thanks everybody for your comments. We appreciate them.
Let's move okay. into announcements. We are going into announcements. So we are winding down the summer this week with our last official scheduled concert of the Summer Waterfront Concert Series. We will have Culture Hound, an Austin High School graduate, Justin Cusio's band, will be entertaining us at 7 p.m. And then the Old Mill Singers finishing off our live music event starting at 8 p.m. this Friday, August 31st. But wait, there's more. Remember DJ Catch One's dance party that was planned for a couple Fridays back? Well, that got rained out. So we have DJ Catch One coming back with his crew Friday, September 7th, starting at 6.30 p.m., following a Mind, Body, Spirit, Austin yoga session, just free, with Tasia Sabatino from Rebel Yoga Studios. She will lead everyone in a high-powered yoga experience starting at 5.15 on September 7th. That's 5.15 p.m. I know a lot of you know I like to wake up early, but it's 5.15 p.m. And I can say firsthand that I know it will be great. Uh, she really gets people motivated and has a great flow, so I highly suggest that you come out for Tasia's uh, Rebel Yoga event. It's also a great way for us to highlight one of the most important Austin basics. Maximize love, manage stress. We just had an Austin Basics stakeholder meeting today so we could all refocus uh, before the school year gets off, to, off the ground around a shared goal. And that goal is to make sure our entire community understands how powerful the five simple truths of the Austin Basics are to make sure our youngest community members get started on the right foot. Maximize love, manage stress, talk, sing, and point, to help the little ones start to understand the world through language, count, group, and compare, to start sharing number sense in context, explore through movement and play, in other words, get outside, move around, dance and play, and finally, read and discuss stories. These are the five basics which, if we all embrace them and remember to engage our babies and toddlers with them at every opportunity, we will, we will help um, our children profoundly shift outcomes um, their outcomes and make sure that all of those that are receiving these simple message messages will have um, much improved success. And of course, what better way to maximize love and manage stress so that you can help your little babies than to participate in yoga and dancing on September 7th. So come on out. 2018-2019 first half school bills went out in the mail last week and are also available to pay online. We have a new method of paying uh, your tax bills that may be of interest. Frequently, Austin residents have not had the best of luck with delivery of their mail, which is unfortunate on a regular day, but extra horrible when it costs you money in the form of a late payment tax penalty. After receiver of taxes, Holly Perlowitz and I met with a postmaster in Austin on numerous occasions. We have worked up something to address this issue. The Austin Post Office will now have a designated mail slot available 24-7 for Austin tax bills, just taxes, meaning town, county, village, or school tax payments, not water or application fees. If you place your payment into the slot before 5 p.m. on any given day, it will be postmarked for that day at 5 p.m. If you place your payment into the slot after 5 p.m. on any given day, it will be postmarked for the following day at 5 p.m. We are looking forward to starting this new program uh, and hope that it will help our residents to rest easy knowing their tax payments will be postmarked timely. Just another way to maximize love and manage stress. Tomorrow morning, August 29th, the Austin School District will be hosting, hosting a welcome party for new families with children, children entering the school district in Austin on Everett Avenue near Park School beginning at 9.30 a.m. There will be lots of local organizations represented, including, including us, to help welcome newcomers, so spread the word and meet some new neighbors. And of course, that leads to the next important point, which is that it's just about time for everyone to go back to school. Well, not, maybe not everyone. Teachers start early next week, and the kids start showing up a few days later. So if you picked up some speed on our seemingly empty roads, please remember now is the time to slow down. Take some deep breaths and plan your weekends while you wait patiently at lights for students to cross or behind stopped school buses. Just remember to slow down. Also, we will take up a resolution a little later in our meeting which focuses on attendance and remembering how important it is to make sure your students show up to school and stay in school. And if your kids are looking for some extracurricular experiences outside of their school day 
or you are, the fall recreation brochure is available online. Right now, it is only available through the Village website, but there are loads of great classes, including all of the new art offerings for children and adults alike at Cedar Lane Art Center, and a brand new software program to help us get you signed up more easily. So please go to thevillageofossening.org and look for the recreation brochure and get registered. Just another way to help you maximize love and manage stress. The best way to help you be a great parent if you are one. The J.W. Cofield Scholarship Ministry is in partnership with Star of Bethlehem Church, will be holding their Back to School Bash on Saturday, September 1st, between noon and 3 p.m. They are looking for backpacks and school supplies. Can you help? Donations can be brought to the church at 304 Spring Street or to IFCA at 138 Spring Street. On Wednesday, September 5th, come to Shadmuck Yacht Club and hear live music performed by Sarah Brown as part of Fairy Sloop Summer Music Series. Sarah's music is a little pop, smidge country, and a tad folksy, and her voice is simply beautiful. This free event begins at 7.30 p.m. Then on Saturday, September 8th, Ferry Sloops will offer free sales on the Hudson River every hour on the hour between 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. as part of the Hudson Valley Ramble. September 8th will be a very busy day in Austin. The annual corn roast is back at the farmer's market, so get in your few, last few tastes of summer. Also that day is the Austin Matters 5K run two-mile walk. It should be a beautiful day uh, to go through the town and village. Check out ostinymatters.org for some more information about the routes and to register. Proceeds go to benefit additional programs in the schools, which the, bus the school budget doesn't cover. September 8th is also Climate Action Day, and we are hoping to have two lime bikes at the Green Ostiny table at the Farmer's Market to showcase what will be possible the following week during the lime bike pop-up in Ostiny from September 15th to 21st, which will all lead up to Car Free Day on September 21st. If you haven't been on a bicycle on the streets in a while, think about participating in Bike Ossining also on September 8th. Put on your helmet, get on your bike, and ride over to Market Square to join other residents looking to pedal around and about Ossining. Pedal Peekskill will have some pedal assist demo bikes on hand to try out on our hills. Cyclists of all stripes are welcome to join together for rides around town starting at about 11 a.m. Go to greenossing.org for more information. That same day, Sing Sing Kill Brewery will unveil their new bike rack. Ride in, rack up, and refresh is their slogan. Lobster Fest is right around the corner. From 6 to 10 p.m. on September 8th at the Quality of Life building outside Sing Sing, uh, be sure to get your tickets now at ossiningchamber.org. Advanced ticket sales end on August 31st, so sign up now or you're going to miss out on that great bag of lobster and clams and corn and potatoes, and it's quite delicious. I can, I can vouch for that. And I think that's it for my announcements. Does anybody else have anything to add? All right. In that case, liaison reports. Do we have any liaison reports? Departmental reports? Also none. Okay, so we'll move into town board resolutions. Departmental, that's under monthly report. Okay. Town board resolutions. Okay. A letter A, approval of me minutes, special meeting resolved that the town board of the town of Ossing hereby approves the August 21st, 2018 minutes of the special meeting as presented. Do we have a couple of absences on that day, perhaps? No, um, we're, everybody's I here? I not see any. Okay, wonderful. Do I have a motion? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions, just in case? Okay, no. Thank you. Letter B, approval of voucher detail report. Resolve of the town board hereby approves the voucher detail report dated August 28, 2018 in the amount of $76,943.96. Do I have a motion? So moved. Any discussion? The expensive door. It's many doors. That was, it's, it's more than one door. Okay. Yeah. And it, and they're all automatic locking doors that can be programmed. So that's why they're expensive. And we did go out to bid for them. Well, we got, we got multiple estimates, I should say. All right. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Yeah. Letter C, Tax Certiari, Tappan Arms, Inc versus Town of Ossing, whereas proceedings pursuant to Article 7 of the Real Property Tax Law of the State of New York 
were instituted by Tappan Arms, Inc. against the Town of Austin to review the tax assessments made on petitioner's property located at 35 Morningside Drive, Town of Austin, and designated on the tax assessment map of the Town of Austin as Section 90.14, Block 1, Lot 66, for tax assessment years 2012 through 16, which proceedings are now pending in the Supreme Court of the State of New York, County of Westchester under index number 65295 12, 65094 13, 66153 15, 68521 16, and 65043 17. I'm, and, gonna I'm just going to jump go in really quickly. Um, <laughs> I cut these down a little bit um, because they're very long and um, they go into great detail. Um, all of the information is available on the agenda, which is available on the website and online and in the clerk's office. But for the purposes of just reading it here tonight, since we don't have much of an audience, um, if it's okay with the supervisor, we'll, we won't read the entire resolutions for all of the tax service. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and everybody, Mr. Wilcher. <laughs> <Council members. laughs> and, 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 and they are very grateful. And they are, um, I, but I mean, is it, is it possible? It's preferred. In case you didn't hear me say that before, um, is it possible to adopt all the tax certs in a? What's a, I know that there's like a, a term for that when you can say, okay, a motion for like five tax certs at once or not? Do we have to still read them all? Well, I, I pretty much consent cut, agenda. I pretty much okay. Well, I pretty much cut out everything that wasn't specific to the individual. Okay. So it should cut it down considerably. I mean, but right, because I mean, if we could just read the the title of each one and then just get down to the, I don't know, the assessed value changes, that, that seems to me like it would be sufficient for the record. I wasn't even going to read those. Okay, well, whatever you recommended, gonna, I, was, I will take. I was just going to read the, um, the, the introductory paragraph okay. and then the... The, set, the result. The okay, so are you so you're result. taking over and reading them then? No, I'm a, I, I apologize. I just I, I mean we probably wasted all the time we would have saved. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, was just, I was just gonna say like, just let them do it. Okay, good. Go ahead. Good. We can For, discuss it further going forward. Thank you. Resolve subject to the approval of the Supreme Court Westchester County that the assessor is authorized and directed to make the changes and corrections to the individual unit assessment on the tax assessment role of the town of Ossing, which will be ordered pursuant to the consent judgment to be entered in accordance with the terms of the settlement and the receiver of taxes is authorized and directed to process and pay the refund of the town of Austin taxes estimated to be $9,437.34, which will be ordered pursuant to said consent judgment. Do I have a motion? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Letter D, tax cert. Paladino Inc. versus Town of Austin, whereas proceedings pursuant to Article 7 of the Real Property Tax Law of the State of New York were instituted by Paladino Inc. LLC against the Town of Austin to review the tax assessment made on petitioner's property located at 192 North Highland Avenue, Town of Austin, and designated on the tax assessment map of the Town of Austin as Section 89.11, Block 1, Lot 71, for tax assessment year 2011 through 2016, which proceedings are now pending in the Supreme Court of the State of New York, County of Westchester, under index numbers 57289-11, 67952-12, 67188-14, 67188-14, subject to the approval of Supreme Court, Westchester County, that the assessor is authorized and directed to make changes and corrections to the individual unit assessment of the tax assessment role of the Town of Ossing, which will be ordered pursuant to the consent judgment to be entered in accordance with the terms of this settlement. And the receiver of taxes is authorized and directed to process and pay the refund of Town of Ossing taxes estimated to be $1,401.67, which will be ordered pursuant to said consent judgment. Do I have a motion? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Letter F, La Mesa Associates, LLC versus Town That's of e. Austin. Hmm? Letter E. Letter E. 
Oh, I'm sorry, letter E, La Mesa Associates LLC versus Town of Austin, whereas proceedings pursuant to Article 7 of the Real Property Tax Law of the State of New York were instituted by La Mesa Associates LLC against the Town of Austin, Village of Briarcliff to review the tax assessment made on petitioners' properties, one located at 1312 Pleasantville Road, Village of Briarcliff Manor, Town of Austin, and designated on tax assessment map of the Town of Austin as Section 89, I'm sorry, 98.10, Block 1, Lot 5, Lot 5, and the other property located at 1326 Pleasantville Road, Village of Barcliff Manor, Town of Austin, and designated on the tax assessment map of the Town of Austin as Section 98.10, Block 1, Lot 4, for tax assessment years 2012 through 2017, which proceedings are now pending in the Supreme Court of the State of New York County of Westchester under index numbers 66926-12, 67127 67927-2014, 67282-2015, 64954-2016, and 64932-2017. Resolved, subject to the approval of the Supreme Court Westchester County that the assessor is authorized and directed to make the changes and corrections to individual unit assessment on tax assessment roll of the Town of Austin, which will be ordered pursuant to consent judgment to be entered in accordance with the terms of this settlement, and the receiver of taxes is authorized and directed to process and pay the refund of Town of Austin taxes estimated to be $1,122.64, which will be ordered pursuant to said consent judgment. Do I have a motion? So move. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Yes. Letter F. David Swope versus Town of Ossing, whereas proceedings pursuant to Article 7 of Real Property Tax Law of the State of New York were instituted by David Swope against the Town of Ossing to review the tax assessment made on petitioner's property located at Hawks Avenue, Town of Ossing, and designated on the tax assessment map of the Town of Ossing as Section 80.16, Block 1, Lot 9, for tax assessment years 2016 through 17, which proceedings are now pending in the Supreme Court of the State of New York County of Westchester under index numbers 64742-16 and 66129-17. And resolved subject to the approval of Supreme Court, Westchester County, that the assessor is authorized and directed to make changes and corrections to the individual's unit assessment on the tax assessment role of the Town of Ossing, which will be ordered pursuant to the consent judgment to be entered in accordance with the terms of the settlement. And the receiver of taxes is authorized and directed to process and pay and refund the Town of Ossing taxes estimated to be $3,703.43, which will be ordered pursuant to said consent judgment. I have a motion. So moved. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Letter G, Finance 2018 Budget Adjustments for Equipment Purchases. Resolved that the Town, of Aus Town Board of the Town of Ossing authorizes a budget adjustment for purchase of Kenworth chassis and hook lift hoist funded partially by 2017 capital project 5202 recreation heavy equipment in the amount of $62,293 and a transfer from general fund balance of $62,506. Oh, okay. Oh, you want to say from which line to which line? Oh, sure. You could say, you could say have a motion. Okay. Could you have a motion? Second. Okay, so just as a reminder, this was for the purchase of the hook lift truck for our parks department. Um, the truck has already been hard at work and played a big role in getting the pavilion and parks improvements complete at Gerlach Park. Um, and it was budgeted. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Letter H, 2018 Budget Adjustments for Equipment Purchases resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Austin authorizes a budget adjustment for the purchase of Elgin Broom Badger Street Sweeper funded by 2018 budget expenditures of $126,500 and a transfer from highway fund balance of $71,780. We have a motion. So moved. Second. 
our highway MEO Kevin Moore speaks very highly of this new machine which has saved time and is doing a great job keeping our streets clean discussion all those in favor aye, aye. aye. opposed letter I temporary beer wine cider permits for facilities rentals October 12th 2018 resolve the town board of the town of Austin hereby authorizes the supervisor to sign the landlord authorization form for the New York State Liquor Authority for a temporary beer wine cider license for Miss Elijah Simpson, who is in the process of filing an application for the rental of the Cedar Lane Arts Center in the town of Ossing on Friday, October 12, 2018, and be it further resolved that the applicant will pro provide proof of insurance and a and the letter of indemnity to the town in a form acceptable to counsel to the town. Do I have a motion? I moved. Okay, so Miss mm -hmm. Alicia Simpson from Crossover Yoga is planning to have a fundraiser um, and is in the process of filing an application for the rental of Cedar Lane Arts Center, which I'm sure we will all be invited to. Um, it's a wonderful organization, and um, I will be supporting this. All those in uh, do I have a motion? I did a motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Letter J, Personnel Town Tax Office Appointment. Resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Austin hereby appoints Martha Quintisaka Austin to probationary position of part-time intermediate clerk in the Town Tax Office at an hourly rate of $13, effective August 27, 2018. Do I have a motion? So moved. Okay, so our receiver of taxes has informed us that Martha Quintisaka has been working out so well in her office <laughs> and has been so helpful to the people, she would like to appoint her to the probationary position of part-time intermediate clerk in the town tax office. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution K, resolution supporting attendance awareness month. Whereas good attendance is essential to student achievement and graduation, and we are committed to dedicating our resources and attention to reducing chronic absenteeism rates with a focus of starting as early as pre-kindergarten and kindergarten. And whereas chronic absence missing 10% or more of the school for any reason, including excused and unexcused, unexcused absences or, or just two or three days a month is a proven predictor of academic trouble and dropout rates. And whereas improving attendance and reducing chronic absences absence takes commitment, collaboration, and tailored approaches to particular challenges and strengths in each community. And whereas the chronic absence predicts lower third grade reading proficiency, course failure, and eventual dropout, and we, it weakens our communities and our local economy. And whereas the impacts of chronic absence hits students in low income communities and children of color particularly hard in they don't have the resources to make up for lost time in the classroom and are more likely to face systemic barriers to getting to school, such as unreliable transportation, lack of access to health care, un unstable or unaffordable housing. And whereas ap attendance gaps among groups of students often turn into achievement gaps and undermine student success. Chronic absence particularly exacerbates the achievement gap that it separates students in low-income communities from their peers since the students from low-income communities are both more likely to be chronically absent and more likely to be affected academically, academically by missing school. And whereas absenteeism also undermines efforts to improve struggling schools since it is hard to measure improvement in classroom instruction if students are not in class to benefit from them. And whereas schools and community partners can reach out more frequently to absent students to determine what barriers they face to attending schools and what would help them attend more regularly. And whereas healthcare providers can share the importance of school attendance with families and can offer proactive preventative care to reduce absences and whereas all students even those those who show up regularly are affected by chronic absence because teachers must spend re time reviewing for students who miss lessons and whereas chronic absence can be significantly reduced when schools families and communities work together to monitor and promote good attendance and address hurdles that keep children from getting to school and now therefore be it resolved that the town board of the town of Ossing we support our school districts and we 
and will continue to stand with the nation in recognizing September as Attendance Awareness Month. We hereby commit to focusing on reducing chronic absenteeism to give all children an equitable opportunity to learn, grow, and thrive academically, emotionally, and socially. Do you have a motion? So moved. Okay, so uh, I think the town is happy to support our school districts, and in whatever way we can, our school district, one of our school districts had reached out to us to ask us to um, approve the, this resolution and um, by, by the board so that we could bring attention and awareness to the issue of um, good attendance and to help reduce chronic absenteeism. Um, so we're happy to do that. And um, unless there's further discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Letter L, resolution extending water IMA, whereas the town of Austin and the village of Austin entered into an intermunicipal agreement commencing on January 1st, 2002 for the village to supply the unincorporated area of the town of, of the town with water 2002 agreement and whereas the term of the 2002 agreement was for a period of 15 years and whereas the town and the village entered into a subsequent agreement extending the, extending the term of the 2002 agreement until June 30th, 2018. And whereas the town and the village desire to further extend the term of the 2002 agreement until June 30th, 2019. And now therefore be resolved that the town supervisor is hereby authorized to execute an agreement with the village further extending the term of the 2002 agreement until June 30th, 2019, subject to approval of council of the town as to form. Do I have a motion? Second. So we continue to be uh, very grateful to the village for providing us such delicious water coming from both the Indian Brook and Croton um, Aqueduct and uh, New Croton Reservoir and the um, while we are hopeful that in the future we can find um, a less costly to our unincorporated residents way to do that, um, at this time we have not yet come up with such a plan and we will continue to work cooperatively with the town and hope, uh, with the village and hopefully the school district as well to see if there's anything that we can do to change that for the future, but we're happy to continue to have um, great water to provide uh, through this IMA. Um, thank you. All those in favor? Right. Aye. Opposed? Correspondence to be received and filed. Monthly reports. Resolved that the town board of the town of Austin hereby accepts the following monthly report. Dale Cemetery, July 2018. Do we have a motion? So moved. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Visitor recognition. Don't all jump up at once. All right, so in that case, I will take um, a motion to adjourn into work session. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So we have one item on our work session agenda, and that is to discuss the solar code. Does anybody want to kick off the conversation? Or, David, do you have any recommendations based on the input <laughs> that we've received? I think it's on now. Thank you. We got correspondence from John Hamilton, our building inspector, and um, he pointed out a couple things. Uh, there's one category of things where comparing what's in the draft local law to the zoning law in terms of accessory structures and accessory buildings. And um, similarly to the accessory apartment regulations, I drafted a, a section basically says that if there's a conflict between this section and other parts of the uh, chapter, this section is controlling. So that makes it very clear. Uh, he, he was also recommending that perhaps we should allow uh, tier three in the GB zoning district. There's a, there were a couple of larger parcels, especially in the northern end of the GB district. And um, as long as it, they were to meet the minimum lot size, like the uh, on the uh, the right hand side going north on North State Road, there's a, I don't know if it's still used for this purpose, but uh, they would they store garbage trucks on that property. And he thought that perhaps that property or other property similar to that could be uh, appropriate for tier three solar energy systems. So I, I think that would be fine. 
most of the parcels on North State Road are too small for that, but this is a fairly big parcel. It's paved. It's um, it's uh, it's got a, a fair amount of impervious surface relative to the size of the parcel already. It wouldn't take down any trees probably, and you would just install panels, ground-mounted panels. But I think under circumstances like that, it would be okay. That was also something the zoning board had discussed at their meeting. And that they submitted a memo, and that was their only recommendation, the same one about the GB dish. Okay. We talked about their other recommendation where they wanted. Um, I think that was accessory apartments. Oh, I'm sorry. Apartments. Accessory apartments. Yeah. You're absolutely right. That's sorry. Okay. <laughs> sorry. Um, so that was basically John's comments. We got comments from Donna Sherritt. Uh, I think her comments regarding, I think, I think they're <laughs> mostly basically food to incorporate. Mm. So I can go ahead and do that. Uh, we got some comments from Del Bello, Donnellan, Weingarten, Wise, and Weidecker representing the uh, applicant who would like to build the solar farm on 90 and 90 and possibly 94 Somerstown Road. And um, I think at the last meeting I had said that <coughs> their main comment was kind of superfluous. Mm -hmm. I can, it's, it's already in the local law. Right, it's just uh, how you interpret it, I think. Right, right, so I can make that more clear so that there's no, there would be no change from what I had recommended originally, but it would just be made more clear. Um, we talked about the uniform permit. There is a sort of an expedited processing uh, <coughs> alternative that um, on page. And that was for the for the for the roof for the roof mounted. It's actually uh, it would be for tier one and tier two. Tier, so roof okay. mounted and building integrated as part of tier one and tier two would be the smaller ground mounted solar energy systems. And they would, under the, uh, the regulations that have been drafted so far, they would require site plan approval from the planning board. And um, Liz, I think you mentioned at prior work session that you might not be in favor of the uniform permit for, for those. I, I would agree, actually. That um, it should still go back to the... should go to the planning board for site plan approval for the tier two. And the tier three would have site plan for, approval. For only for tier two, not for tier one. Not for tier one. Okay. I right. think... I think there should be A or B approval for tier one, perhaps, mm -hmm. but not. Um, I mean, that's just. Com I just think you know we have we're trying to get people to put solar panels on their roofs. Uh, we're gonna have to send them to the ARB every time. I, I, I know that they're not doing that in other places. I, I think, I, at least I think. I shouldn't well, say I know. You, know, you, you mentioned uh, mentioned looking at other communities, and in the appendices to this uh, document by. NYSERDA, Solarized Westchester Barrier Removal for Solar Permitting Research Guys Guide. Uh, the last page is a kind of a matrix with all the communities in Westchester. And um, they, there are quite a few communities that do require air reverb. Okay. And I don't know if you have this, but I can. Uh, I don't have it, but I would like to. I can scan this and send it to you tomorrow. Okay, that'd be great. I don't so I, I don't think it should be extensive ARB review, but. Um, well, how do you? You don't think it should do be extensive? <laughs> what does that mean? I, mean, I, I think we could I mean, probably, I, probably streamline things for the uh, solar panels that are either on the roof or integrated into the building. <laughs> so I think we could streamline that in okay. terms of the ARB review. Okay. I mean, I think that, you know, then I think that's then we should consider that for sure. All right. Does anybody and else have any other thoughts on that? Or so there that? would be a special process just for like tier one and tier two, for the ARB as opposed so to the streamlined tier, process. Tier two would require site plan approval from the planning board okay. and ARB approval. It streamlined tier one so that people could come in and get solar panels for their roofs fairly quickly. Okay. And um, I think that's pretty much it. In terms of the correspondence we've gotten and the comments we've received, we did have comments at the last planning board from about the tree. Oh, yeah, we had the plan, the two planning board members had had I'd weighed in, had weighed in, and we can continue to. Um, I don't think we heard anything formally yet from the planning board, but I'm not sure that we sent it to the planning board officially. Right, I have the correspondence from Darren Puffham, 
and um, Mark Hofflick. You want to go through those? Uh, um, I don't think they were extensive. They were. It was just pretty much what we heard from the from. Again, I think you know, it's giving. Uh, we're not. Well, Gareth said. Yeah, go ahead. Gareth said. Um, There has been some email back and forth about a potential solar farm application and about an upcoming vote by the town board to allow the solar farm to clear cut 16 acre tract of forest for it. I admit to being behind the eight ball on this one. I haven't followed it except for reading proposed changes to the code regarding solar installations. Could you let me know to what extent this solar farm rumor is accurate? If it is true, it does bring up some environmental ethics questions that would be good to kick around before any decisions are made. And uh, well, that's to a specific property. We don't want to talk about that. Right, right. We and haven't been talking about a specific. I mean, no. Somebody came. I just want to talk in general. It, but right, and and the notion, just to stand it for one more second or two, the notion of clear cutting a property from corner to corner to corner to corner is not what we're talking about for a solar farm. We're talking about setbacks and buffers and and all kinds of stuff like that. And then Mark Hufflich says. Um, I agree with Gareth regarding the topic of solar farm and an application for cutting down, clear cutting an established forest for a solar farm. Uh, I cannot speak for other planning board members in reviewing the section solar farm on page three. This would need to be modified to state that no existing forests or other trees be cut down to accommodate a solar farm and or a solar panel. If possible, again, I cannot speak for others as to their concerns. And I, I think that it's it's not really possible to have a solar farm without cutting down some trees. But I think you made a good point earlier, Dana, that um, you know, there has to be a balance. And whether a property, an underdeveloped or an undeveloped property is put to use for a solar farm or for a residential development, trees are going to come down. And we have a 50% biomass replacement for trees um, either putting trees on the property that is concerned on some other property approved by the town board or money into a tree bank fund for the replacement of trees or the planting of trees. So um, I did think some of those suggestions that we heard from uh, Donna were good ones also to say that if we wanted to include anything like, you know, for the, for the in the event of, you know, uh, solar installation, solar farm installation, that we maybe allow shrubs or, or something like that, but not at one-to-one. -one. So we'd have to come up with some other number. And of course, we can encourage wildflower plantings and all those other things or, or require them, I suppose. Um, I know that there's some issues about bees. I can't, I can't remember if that was part of that that I've read about um, solar farms and now they're encouraging the plantings at the lower levels. Um, under under the panels, um, right. um, in certain circumstances around the panels with a wildflower mix or seed mix that would attract bees and, and other insects. Right, so that, that you can have, a, again, an offset, which again is not replacing the trees, but is also a positive for the environment when you're, you know, putting up solar panels. Um, also, we'd gotten a comment from Dan Ciarcia, who's a town engineer, to if the board wants to incur sustainable energy, you may want to provide some level of relief from Chapter 183 for solar farms, which is. I didn't see that. That's he just sent it today. I forwarded it to. It was it came out like five o'clock tonight. Hmm? Which is the tree code, um, and then he suggested that there's a ground-mounted solar farm installation in New York Town. If anyone's interested in taking a look, he would arrange a tour. So he was suggesting relaxing 183? Right, he said for solar farms you need to clear the footprint of the system and clear the area surrounding the system to maximize the southern exposure. But the part you read initially. Yeah, that I, I read you the whole thing. That's what it says you may want to provide some level of relief from chapter 183. For solar farms, you need to clear the footprint of the system and clear the area surrounding the system to maximize the southern exposure. I mean, I think, you know, again, I think that we're trying to find a way to make it possible without having an ultimate, I, we know it's going to have right. any, any, any development is going to have an impact on our environment. So how can we offset it? And I think, you know, there is a, there is an upside to both. Again, yeah. we, I, 
I hate, I, I get what you're saying. I understand what you're saying and how it doesn't affect the schools. I took a long drive around the state this weekend, bringing my son all the way to Buffalo and through the Finger Lakes. I saw a couple of solar farm developments. It, they're really aesthetically, really not what I think is right for our community. I mean, looking at them, I don't know how we can screen something that big from, you know, I, I wouldn't want it next to my house and dri even driving along, it, it just detracted from the communities. And I have to say, I'm after looking at them, I really don't think they belong in residential neighborhoods. I mean, maybe some small, you know, scaled ones, but not these bigger ones just, you know, after looking at them, I really don't think they belong in residential neighborhoods. I know you disagree with me. Um, I just that, can't just say. A, but you're comparing it to something upstate, which is, which you're is talking about agricultural old. lots that are, you know, acres and acres and acres of land. Yeah, I, they weren't that big. It was in, but, you know, the reality is, I don't know that our community is, should be the solar generating capital of Westchester. I mean, I think that that's a little bit of an overstatement that our solar code is going to allow us to become the, would you no, call I it the that. solar, solar generating, generating capital of Westchester? I, I just think that that's not, okay. I think just, that that's I an exaggeration of what we're trying to do. And I think that that's exactly the kind of fodder that leads to these conversations on Facebook that undermines the possibility of a development that could have upsides. I'm just trying to envision what I would want in my own neighborhood and what somebody would want in theirs and what I would like to see. I mean, I understand we have screening and, you know, I think I will go take a look at the one in Yorktown and see what it looks like and see if they have it screened to, you know, something that belongs in a community. But the ones that I saw, I don't think, you know, maybe in the general business, but not so in a residential. So. I just want to reiterate, um, we, we're going to have to do things that address our energy needs um, mm -hmm. unless we want to go a completely different route. Um, if a property is zoned for development and a solar farm, you know, and, and a solar farm can be allowed or homes can be allowed, um, I think that we really have to weigh the, the benefits uh, of what we need. So I, I understand that um, it might not be what we like to look at, partly because we've never, ever had to look at it before. It's a brand new thing. So let's not make, you know, let's just try to, to recognize that we're taking great pains to make sure that it's, it's not an eyesore in the community, that, you know, we have extreme energy needs in our community, and we don't have a lot of, of ability to, to use renewables in, in a way that they can really start replacing some of the other things that people have concerns with, whether it's, whether it's um, fossil fuels or whether it's nuclear energy. So if we're not willing to explore what can be, then we're not going to really be able to meet the needs of our community because our energy needs are going to continue to, to grow with the pop, as the population grows, even if we ourselves can cons conserve. So again, um, change is hard, and, and, but we're living in a different world. So if, if the screening can accommodate something that then doesn't put an additional burden on whether it's a school district or other environmental burdens that, uh, that a residents would have, um, then there may be some real benefits to the community too. So let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater. Let's try to really figure out a way to do this the best way possible. I'm absolutely in favor of solar on roofs. I'm in favor of smaller installations that, you know, aren't very but, large, but, but they're very, very limited. Installations that you're going to drive by for, you know. But they're, they're very limited in what they can achieve. So all I'm saying is if we're not willing to um, look at, other ways to address our energy needs um, using renewables, then, then I think we're going to be compromised in other ways because I'm also not willing to put a nuclear power plant or you know coal burning plant. Here okay, but, but 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 are are you willing to live without electricity? I mean, you know, we we need energy sources, so that's the that's the challenge we all face. Um, so I, I just wouldn't put things out of hand, and and technology is evolving. I you know, get in, that, and in, I think in, it's not there yet. And putting this this type doesn't—I don't think fits our community. 
uh, putting it on rooftops. If you couldn't see the panels from the roadway, that satisfy you? And the neighbors couldn't see it from their houses. Right. I that mean, would be that would be more. You know, I'm, I'm, a, I'll go see the one in Yorktown and see how they have that screened. We're right. talking about a hundred foot buffer. Put a lot a lot of plant materials in that. And actually, if you think about it, if you have access into a new subdivision, you're going to have a roadway cut in off of a main road. Right. And we have a 20 foot height limit, was it? 15? Um, the height limit for tier three is 20 feet in the uh, business education zone where GE is. Oh, office research business and the office research education, it's 20 feet. It's less than that in the one, it's only 15 feet of maximum height, one family zoning districts. And you know, you'd have a driveway into the site, somewhat narrow driveway just for a maintenance vehicle to get in and not a big roadway, brand new roadway coming off of the road. And if there was sufficient buffering along the, the main road um, and buffering along the property lines in that 100 feet, I think you can achieve what you're, you're looking for. You know, I just, again, I think that there's a lot of things to be weighed. It's not only, it's not only that, you know, okay, yes, would, would trees need to come down in certain parcels? Yes, not in all parcels, right? Oh, I That's get that. One. So, again, I'm fine we're with our sure, tree codes the way they are. Right, we're not 100% sure that they're, that this would even be financially feasible in this parcel that's come up for conversation. It may or may not be. And it may be that, you know, some, again, that this is something that would happen on a piece of property that's already um, been cut, right? And then that. that might be much more, again, economically feasible for somebody who was looking to develop something like this. We are, have to look at all of the impacts, impacts on infrastructure, whether it's, you know, providing water or providing sewer or providing um, roadways. And we know from having sat through, you know, meetings from uh, and hearing from our public that people aren't looking for large scale developments. So, you know, what's left is again, single family homes in, in certain parcels. And while that seems like it's in keeping with the neighborhood, it also has these other economic impacts on our community. And it has impacts that aren't right now um, necessarily being welcome, which is, um, you know, more children added to our school district or um, looking for more sources of water. Um, and so there's lots of things to consider. And the thing, in my opinion, about solar farms is it's, it's a balance. I mean, it's great to say that we're interested in, in solar energy generation. A lot of people couldn't put it on their rooftops or couldn't have a ground mounted for a variety of reasons. I can myself. I can and understand. community solar is sort of like this new way that people can contribute, um, you know, and pay into. Um, so you can you can basically have solar providing for electricity, and um, that's got, you know, again, tremendous upsides. So I mean, I think it's a little nimbyish, nimbyish to say we don't want we don't want it here, but it's okay for them to have it there or in that community, in that community, and we want the benefits, but we don't want to take any of the obligations or the responsibilities. To be able to, um, again, I don't think we're going to have suddenly the solar capital of Westchester because I don't think we have enough properties to make it possible, and it still comes before zoning or planning that they would be able to have discretion to say, you know what, we have too many of these. The other thing that we could do is we could we could put in a limit right now and say we only want, as part of the code, we could say, you know what, once we got two of these or, you know, that's it, we're done. We don't want more than two. We could, that's something that we could consider adding in um, or. Or a size limit. I think we could, at least, what, what you know, I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask our council about that. Why don't we talk about that um, uh, offline? Okay, we'll talk about it offline, but is all, all I'm saying is that there's a possibility that we could change something after we have two of them, for example. It, that's a possible, I don't know, no. I think that's something we would probably have to look into. Okay, so we would have to look into that. But again, I think that there's a way that, you know, the yeah, town could I mean, limit again, that. I'm all for on top of the buildings, working into parking lot structures, fences, yeah. you know, all kinds of different ways. And they're coming out with more and more technology that makes it possible and aesthetically pleasing. Mm -hmm. Um, I just don't know that the farm is, you know, a large farm is something that I'm okay with. 
mean, again, large is relative to what's available. Right, and the screen, you know, I'm going to go look at the one in Yorktown and see how it looks because the ones I saw, I don't think I want that. That's just how I feel. Um, I think the whole, the big thing is, again, the balance. Again, this is private property for the most part. Um, things can be done with it. We don't want to have a bigger impact on the school system. Every time we have something like that that comes up, we get the public up in arms and they're upset with that. So I think we need to be open-minded about other options and this is one other option. And we don't know the parameters or the, that the, the ones that you saw, we don't know the parameters. Do they have the 100 foot setback? Do they have the 20 foot? I, I mean, we don't know enough about what other people are doing and what their um, laws entail as opposed to what we're trying to do here. And I think we're, we're doing our due diligence of trying to balance the environmental, the financial, the aesthetic, and I, I think we need to keep an open mind. I sit and I listen to all of the talk about no uh, saving all the trees and making everything green. We wouldn't be sitting here now if some trees wasn't cut down. Everywhere you go, every house, you got trees that's been cut down to fill a house. And, and I don't know whether anybody objected at that point or not, but you have to give things a chance to see where they're going. And at this point, I, I don't, I, I can't understand a lot of the, about the solar system. I don't know a lot about it, but there's still one thing. You're, uh, you're entitled to your opinion, <clears throat> and you're also entitled to one vote. <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly. And so, and so when it comes down to it, that's all you're going to get, and the rest of it go where they want to go with it. Absolutely. So it's, I don't see why we make it a, a long, drawn-out thing. If, if, if there was a place we could go look at the solar systems that are, are there, then we could go look at it. So I think what well, I think what I'm hearing is we can take Mr. CRC up on his uh, offer to go take a look at what they have in New Yorktown. Of course, that isn't going to answer the question of what your town code says and it may be different so they may not have the same setbacks or screening requirements so we should look at that as well and um, again I think you know need to find a balance and talk a little bit more about limit limitations um, what what is possible what is not um, for the town and again seeking that nice balance uh, and we can maybe have some draft for uh, the next public hearing that incorporates some of the comments um, that we discussed. And that would be September 12th? Um, is that too Which soon? Is, a Wednesday or... is that too soon? Or... No, no okay. that's fine. Okay. All right. Does that sound good, everybody? All right. Thanks, to everybody, for your input and discussion. And with that, I will take a motion to go into executive session for advice of counsel and personnel. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, so everybody have a wonderful week. I forgot to mention that our town offices will be closed on Monday uh, for Labor Day, and we wish everybody a great um, holiday weekend, safe, and also um, great back to school next week. And we are off. We do, we do not have a meeting next week, so we will see everybody on September 12th, which is a Wednesday. Um, and we will be right here in the at the courthouse at um, 8688 Spring Street. Have a wonderful couple of weeks, everybody. Good night.